third 2020 meeting of the Nassau County Planning Commission. Uh, due to the coronavirus emergency and state federal bans on large meetings or gatherings and pursuant to Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 220.1 issued on March 12, 2020, suspending the open meetings law, the July 23rd, 2020 Nassau County Planning Commission meeting will be held electronically via Zoom and may be viewed by the public via live stream on Zoom uh, as described below. And it'll be entitled the July 23rd, 2020 NCPC meeting. The public may send in their comments for the public portion of the meeting via email to the, do we have a public portion of this? No. There's no public. No, so that, uh, I don't need to read that. Uh, but the, 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 the access and instructions for the Zoom is available on the Nassau County Planning Department webpage, at, which is www.nassaucountyny.gov forward slash 2856 forward slash planning hyphen department. Final decisions will be made on agenda items contained in sections B, C, and D of today's meeting. The Nassau County Planning, uh, uh, no more public comments. Okay. So we'll start with roll call. Uh, Commissioner Warren. Here. Commissioner Shaper. Present. Uh, Commissioner Ellaby. Commissioner Blue. Present. Uh, third Vice Chair Lewis. Present. Second Vice Chair Shapiro. Unmute yourself, Len. Unmute yourself, Len. Present. Sorry about that. Yeah. First Vice Chair Greenfield. Present. And Chairman Glennon, present. We have a quorum. All right. Um, so let's start with the OSPEC. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to cl close the public hearing on OSPEC file number 5 2020. Well, before I do that, have we received any comments? We did not receive any comments for file. Uh, for aspect file 5 2020. Okay, so then I'll entertain a motion to close uh, the public uh, comment period on that. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. So the public comment uh, portion of that is closed and we'll send it back to OSPAC. Uh, next, agenda item C. Who's handling that? John or Greg? Yes. Um, John, so who do we have on the phone there? C it's is Bob an amend amended oh. aspect secret Bob recommendation. Oh. All right, John. One second. He is amended OSPEC seeker recommendation for OSPEC files 14, 15, and 16 of 2019. This is granting permanent easements on Seaman Neck Road in Levittown, Town of Hempstead, section 52, block 44, sorry, block 440, lot 7, uh, Wadsworth Avenue, Levittown, Town of Hempstead, section 51, block 465, lot 15. And Boundary Avenue, North Massapequa with Massapequa zip code and Town of Oyster Bay, Section 52, Block 376, Lot 60. Um, back in February of 2013, this was brought to the Planning Commission for their recommendation vote. Uh, this is for granting permanent easement to the Navy for their environmental restoration program to address the Navy Northrop Grumman, Grumman groundwater contaminant plume. Um, the subject properties are stormwater basements and associated easements on roadways. Uh, the overall action was exempt from CICRA under the enforcement exemption provision since the remedial action and its work plans have been approved by New York State DEC. Uh, this uh, implementation of remedial action is not subject to review, which was thought, but the easements uh, per the Office of Nassau County Attorney requested this application be brought back to the commission to amend their CICRA recommendation because the easements to the Navy uh, need a secret 
action. Here today we have Craig Pavel and uh, Kevin Walsh from the Nassau County Real Estate Department. Good morning, guys. Hi. Good morning. This is Craig Pavel from Nassau County Attorney. Uh, thank you, John, for uh, introducing the item. Uh, John is correct. Um, you know, I wanted to bring this back to make sure uh, that we button up any, any, uh, you know, issues. I just wanted to make it, a, you know, clarification on the resolution kind of. Um, so uh, I'll just reiterate what John said that basically this is indeed a Navy item. Um, it's, it's a, it's a tra transfer of real estate to facilitate the Navy's remediation of the Northrop Grumman, Grumman plume. Um, and, uh, it's going to, you know, there are many, as you, as you guys know, at, at the, uh, the meeting initially, there were legislators there. Uh, it, it is a important public project. Um, so I appreciate, uh, everybody taking the time to, uh, look at this today. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions regarding any of the circumstances here or to further reiterate on their plan of how they've explained what they'll be doing for remediation. Anyone? So yes, good morning, council. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, th I think there's first is just sort of, I wanna make sure that technically we're clear on what we're doing as distinct from what we did previously. So, yeah. uh, so you're saying, I mean, cause, Typically, the understanding is these are major, uh, these reclamation projects are, you know, a, a big deal. There's a lot of technology involved and all that. And so when it comes to an environmental review, there's a reason why those are usually exempt from, uh, you know, an extensive, like, you know, are we really going to engage in an extensive review of every aspect that went into, you know, where the pipes are being located and how they're uh, designed and all that. So. I see certain logic there. Are we, you're making a distinction between the transfer of the land that they need to be able to do the work, where that we would say is covered as part of the remediation and therefore that is a secret exempt, as opposed to the question of the easement itself, which is the essentially the access to the area, to the land that they would be receiving. <laughs> Could you explain how yes, that's correct. is the focus on the easement of the access? Is that what we're talking about today? Um, so, you know, it, it, the, the lines get blurred here, especially when you have an easement document, which uh, specifically, you know, makes reference to federal law regarding authority to conduct remedial actions. You have an easement document that uh, spells out the, you know, the, the, the location of the contamination or or at least uh, details the details the effort regarding the remediation. So there, it, it, the, the lines do get kind of blurred, you know, you know, it's all part of the remedial action in a way. Um, but I think that the distinction if would be, um, you know, and I, I've, I've spoken with New York State DEC Council on this, and he said that himself that it's a, it's a gray area. It's not a clear question, it's a tough question. Um, but his advice was that it doesn't hurt to do a, a New York State DEC, uh, you know, EAF and whatnot. It doesn't hurt. So that's why we're coming back to, um, you know, hopefully see if this can just be, uh, you know, it's kind of like a belt and suspenders uh, situation where there are two, two ways to uh, make sure that we're, you know, doing everything that needs to be done. Uh, but I think the distinction would be between the remedial action and the transfer of the real estate. And again, they're kind of one and the same, but they're not exactly, um, you know, I just wanted to be safe um, out of an abundance of caution uh, to do these, you know, this extra step of, uh, you know, just doing the regular process um, because I wouldn't want this to be, you know, something that, anybody questions at all in the future you know because if you're invoking an exemption maybe somebody says well do you meet the exemption so 
it's kind of an, uh, out of an abundance of caution. Uh, originally, when we brought this, when I when I brought this to to your commission, um, it was on the advice of the same general counsel at New York State DEC that an exemption can be invoked when the plans have been submitted and approved by the DEC. And uh, again, uh, it he will, it's a complicated situation. You know, is is the easement the remedial action? Uh, or is uh, something else through remedial action. So I uh, appreciate, uh, again, uh, everybody taking the time to look at this again and just uh, button it up. So uh, essentially just going belt and suspenders here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I get that part of it. Uh, so could you clarify the documents we have in our packet today? I mean, do we have nine documents for for this action, I mean, it's it's um, they all seem. I'm having a little bit of issue where I can't look at all of them right next to one another to try and see the hairline difference. So, what is really the difference between each of these uh, documents as as they? Sure, Neil, I can answer that. Uh, we provided in your packet today were nine documents, three for each of the three items. There's a case summary. Uh, for the commission's use, as well as the short environmental assessment form part one, a separate document from the short environmental assessment form parts two and three. I mean, but for all the separate documents, with all due respect, there's not much information in all that. I mean, it's it's really repetitive, and I don't know. I, I, I just come away from it saying, what is the actual action? What's going on here? How is this different than earlier? What the are we actual The action is to grant a permanent easement to the Navy. A permanent easement as opposed to a transfer of the land or as in addition to the transfer? Uh, I no can transfer of land. There's yeah, no so be no fee simple transfer. Uh, you know, they're never, it, that was never really part of it to do like a, fee simple transfer, it was always an easement. Um, and to answer your question, there's, there really have not been any material changes. It's just, uh, again, a belt and suspender situation where I wanted to make some changes, uh, proposed changes to uh, the resolution and whatnot. Um, so, so your opinion is that it's more protective and more thorough in the way in which we go through applying SECRA by saying that it's a neg deck as opposed to treating it as an exempt action, which it, on the face of it, it seems to be an exempt action. So I'm a little confused <laughs> as to why it is better to treat it as a neg deck. I mean, if it's really a neg deck, what's, like, how is that, how is that adding belts to the suspenders? What well, that? Uh, I'll speak to that, um, you know, Who's I speaking? spoke with, Greg? Yes. Just Can so the knows. Because yeah, we don't have your face, so. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is Craig again. Um, I I'll put on my video, but I don't know. Are you able to see my my face there? Yeah, you're, you're fine. Just okay. so the court reporter knows who it is. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, your question again was, sir. Oh, no, right. <laughs> I think he just uh, wants to know the difference between the clarity and the underlying distinction. Underlying distinction. Um, so how, how, does, how does treating this as a neg deck rather than exempt action mm -hmm. enhance, enhance the secret determination? How is that a how is that adding belts to the suspenders kind of thing? Okay, so um, looking at it from the perspective of an enhancement or looking at it from the perspective of somebody challenging the action. Uh, you know, right. based on invoking an exemption, uh, somebody could just say, well, here are the, the, here are the fine tooth comb details needed to be satisfied to invoke the exemption. And did you, f and then they can further say, did you fo follow every single detail required to invoke the exemption? I think it's more of a, a, a general commonsensical thing. You know, when you, when you take an exemption, you have to, you know, you have to be, uh, entitled to take it um, here if we do um, you know something else and we just do the regular process um, 
I, I think that we'd be safer that nobody can say, well, you didn't do what needed to be done. Uh, if anything, we will have done over and over and beyond, you know, what was necessary, which is not a bad thing. Uh, I spoke with the council to the DEC. He said, you know, if you do an EAF, it can't hurt. Uh, and but then at the, in the same breath, he said, but I can't give you, I can't speak on behalf of the DEC at this time to say that a, a, a EAF uh, is not necessary. Um, because again, there's this distinction between um, the granting of the land and, and then there's a distinction of, uh, you know, the lead agency conducting remedial activity, because in this case, the action item is the Nassau County grant of real estate, uh, not a Navy's remedial action. And again, they are, there are blurred lines here and everything is part of the same effort in a, in a way, but um, I believe that's the distinction um, that's as I presented it, you know. Okay. So, so following that logic, when you look at the EAF, you see a, um, you know, it's the short EAF. There's really not much by way of any new information revealed because we're doing it this way. If, Correct. Anything, if anything, it's even like sort of more dismissive because it's just sort of saying nothing applies. There's nothing significant here. Um, so that's why I don't, I also don't follow the logic and I'll let it go at this point because it's your call as the uh, attorney's office for the county. But to me, the whole point of, of saying that certain actions are exempt is not meant for a local government to actually be doing all the remediation work and therefore that's exempt. I think it's, right. I think it's meant to say that that would apply, that would apply in a scenario like this where you're providing a governmental action such as an, uh, an easement, and you say, well, what is the ultimate purpose of the easement? Well, it's to carry out this remediation project, and therefore we don't have to do an extensive CEQA. But I stand corrected, and I have to admit, I feel a need to kind of take a deep dive into CEQA. There's been a lot of new cases and stuff, but um, you know, that's just my take when I read this. I, I, I think the exemption absolutely does apply, and it makes logical sense, because then you're attaching all the work that went into preparing that exemption say that's their documentation for this action that gives this county a comfort zone in knowing that what they're approving here is has been reviewed environmentally. Um, whereas here we're saying, okay, we gave it a quick neg deck because it's really just a quick transfer of land when actually, obviously, there's a big reclamation project that's what this is all about. So I don't know that it added anything to, re you know, so that, so, you know, I'll, I'll leave it there. I mean, I, I, it's just, I mean. Commissioner, if I may, I, I just want to add something to that. I think you make great points. We had batted that around that issue around here at, at Public Works. We have a um, a remediation project, if you will, that is under consent or a DEC consent order, and because some of the real estate involved, real estate actions involved in that that in, in uh, carrying out that consent order were not expressly uh, described in the consent in the DEC consent order, the department uh, had taken the position that those real estate actions would be subject to to seeker. So totally different project, but I think that was used, uh, that logic was used in making this final determination. Um, but this is, you know, absolutely something, you know, we want to we want to continue to look into, but I think that that information did play a role in, in the in the decision of council. Right, I'm coming around to understand the, the theory here. <laughs> it is a theory. I mean, uh, I again, I, I spoke with the DEC council, and he said, you know, it's not. It's a tough question. It's not a question he was able to answer definitively. Uh, at, you know, at that time, he gave me his opinion, but you know, caveated his opinion, saying, but I, I can't represent. You know. Okay. The, so, that, so know, coming back to the big picture of the nature of the project and such, we did have those previous yeah. meetings where we had legislators uh, that wanted time to be able to discuss it with their communities. And yeah. All. So do you want to say anything about where we're at with all of that aspect of it? That, 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 that was buttoned up. Um, uh, the Navy did go back and conduct additional community outreach um, and I was told by the Navy that it was to the satisfaction of the leg legislators and I haven't heard uh, otherwise from uh, their office or anyone else. 
Um, so that's where we're at. We're looking to put this on the, uh, you know, uh, next available legislative calendar, which is very soon. Um, and okay. so I appreciate Greg, it again. Yes. Greg, this vice chair Greenfield, I have one question with respect to this perpetual easement. Is the county receiving any compensation from the Navy? Yes. Do we have an agreement where we're getting money? Um, yes, we will be getting money. Um, okay. Yes. Good. And uh, that'll be disclosed at the legislative uh, meeting? Yeah, the, the legislative meeting will, uh, you know, the documentation, the easement, the staff summary will detail the, uh, the parameters of the consideration um, and it will definitely be disclosed. Yes, sir. So, Greg, is there any length of time on that easement or is it just open ended? It is open ended and it terminates um, by its terms uh, when the remediation action is complete. How long so, do they figure that remediate, remedial action to take? So, I believe at the pre meeting when I first came with this, the Navy was there before this commission and uh, Chrissy Chester had said it may be 200 years or maybe it was the engineer. Oh. Uh, it may be, you know, a significant amount of time. Uh, this isn't something that happens in 10 years, uh, certainly. Uh, None of us will be here. Yes, um, <laughs> for what it's worth. But uh, in other words, none of us will be here, but what we're doing today will benefit the future generations of the county. Uh, Absolutely. For many so, uh, Greg, uh, again, uh, Commissioner Greenfield, upon yes. uh, uh, termination or conclusion of uh, the easement, when the Navy decides they're done with the re uh, remediation, uh, will they be required to remove the pipes that they have put in place? So I did speak with uh, the Navy on the terms of the easement agreement, um, and I took note of that specific thing. Um, I wrote comments, I believe John was even copied on that, um, to the Navy saying, you know, when, when, when this is abandoned or when this is over and the easement has run, uh, I requested that, you know, that be in the, in the document that they either remediate or remove or uh, abandon, you know, to the satisfaction of the owner of record at that time. Uh, so I did submit that comment for their consideration. I, um, I'll have to look back to double check to see to what degree they accepted it, but uh, I know they have limitations because of uh, the way federal funding works, much like county. Uh, oh, we don't know what their funding is going to be 200 years from now, so. Exactly. I believe that you've keyed into it. And all of Long Island could be underwater at that point. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so no, Neil, uh, oh, go ahead. Let, let, last item on that, and I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Can we put in our resolution that upon uh, completion that there'll be site restoration, just a general statement like that? Is that out of order? That's my I, question of you or our council. I believe site restoration is in the document, and at least in terms of... It's uh, as is. Yeah, I, I would have to double check to verify that. Um, but I assure you that I have made uh, recommendations and, and feedback to the Navy saying, I'd like site restoration, I'd like, uh, you know, like you're saying, removal of the pipes or removal of any improvements, you know, at the out to our satisfaction. So it's not that we haven't asked for these things. Um, I've definitely done my diligence in uh, requesting these things and much more. But at a certain point, you know, it's a bigger, it's a project that's bigger than, you know, all of us. And it's bigger it. than the county, you know. All right. So I'm fine. When this was, when this was brought to us back, uh, they conditioned it on, th excuse me, three conditions. One, DPW approval. Two, Navy's responsible will pay for maintenance of their infrastructure. And three, Navy's responsible for removal of their infrastructure if and when project is complete. Uh, when it was brought to the commission for your recommendation to be forwarded to the uh, Nassau County Legislature, uh, the recommendation went without conditions. Correct. 
but in the resolution OSPEC um, recommendations are listed and will also be forwarded to the legislature. So, so, so Jeff, I'm hearing that it would not necessarily be out of line for you to add that as a condition at this point, considering that was- uh, Well, it's a recommendation to the ledge, right? Yeah, it's just a recommendation to the ledge, so it's up to them. So, so if you'd like to make the motion, anyone? Yeah, I, I do think so. Uh, particularly, uh, John said at one earlier stage, we did have the, rec the recommendation that uh, when the project is completed, if it is ever completed, that the Navy will uh, may have the responsibility for the uh, cleanup and, and reclamation. I'll, I, I'll just say that I'm looking at the easement document. I'm sorry about that. Greg, you muted, you muted yourself. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Um, it, it, I'm looking at the easement document now, and it says, upon termination, the government shall either remove or abandon the improvements. So it's not that it would be out of, a, out of question. It's not that the instrument would not allow for it. And it may very well be the case that upon termination of the easement, the, you know, the municipality, uh, the county, and the federal government uh, agree that they will conduct uh, such removal. Um, so it's just that it's left open, uh, either or, or, again, removal or abandonment of the improvements. Um, okay, so, so we, what, we, what we're going to do is amend our, our, our um, recommendation to the ledge anyway. So we can include, if Neil or Jeff wants to make the motion, we can make sure it's all included in our recommendation. If Neil makes it, I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that our recommendation to the legislature is to ensure that it does have a provision for, uh, you know, the reclamation and cleanup of the of the site afterwards that may re require removal of some of the equipment. Um, again, that you know, the attorney is going to work out the exact language, but I think. Just as Osbeck raised the question about assuring that it's the uh, Navy's responsibility and such, which, you know, again, we're also operating under the understanding that that's the case. So I don't know that we're necessarily adding anything, just like Osbeck may not have added anything. But I think it's worth being clear to include that as part of the recommendations to the ledge. That's fair. So, yes, I'll second it. Okay. I'll second it. I just have a question to our council um, on the agenda for today is just to amend the seeker recommendation. Could we? I was muted. Further, I was asking, right? Thank you. Could we further um, uh, revise our recommendation to uh, Nassau County Legislature? Revise our resolution. Pat, Bob. On the secret. Neil? Yeah, no, I thought he was asking the attorney to comment. I am asking uh, Patrick Gallagher or Bob O'Brien to respond. I'm muted at this, at this time. Patrick. Oh, okay. um, ah, now I'm unmuted. Yes, you can amend it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. John, the answer is yes. Okay, great. Yes. So we'll do that. Okay, so can you, can you say the motion again, Neil? <laughs> so I, I believe we're recommending from the uh, Nassau County Planning Commission to the Nassau County Legislature when it adopts the final plan of action for the uh, Navy and the cleanup and the including the documentation for the uh, actual um, easement that it includes a uh, condition um, that uh, that the Navy is responsible for the cleanup of the site and the removal of uh, equipment that was brought to the site uh, for the project, um, that that should be understood as part of their responsibility at the end. The NAGDEC? Yes. So that's in a, uh, 
that's to be added on to the motion, but that the main motion is that, uh, that I make a motion that we recommend to the national legislature a uh, unlisted action and neg deck for this. There we go. And that okay. would be for all uh, the files uh, 14, 15, 16 of 2019? Is that right? Correct. Correct. I'll second. I have a motion. Second. Motion made, second, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, roll call. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Here. Commissioner LB still not here. Commissioner Blue? Yes. Third Vice Chair Lewis? Yes. Second Vice Chair Shapiro? Yes. First Vice Chair Greenfield? Yes. Chairman Glennon? Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on now to the minor subdivisions. One more, uh, Craig, before you uh, leave us, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question of Craig? Yes, I'm here. Uh, do you have any indication when the ledge will be returning to in-person session? Since uh, Oyster Bay started in person last week, I want to know if there was any discussion in the county. I did not. I did, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I didn't know Oyster Bay returned. Uh, I believe I'll be presenting electronically on the third. <laughs> However, throughout this period, uh, I believe some people on bigger items were presenting in person. So it may be the case that they asked me to appear in person. I'm not sure. Um, and I would be willing to do that. But no, I, I don't know when the legend will be starting completely in person. My guess is not soon, given the, cir the circumstances of the virus. But uh, I will let you know um, if, if, uh, if I get some information on that. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you again for having me today. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Council. Moving on to agenda item D. Uh, this is NCPC file 23-2020. Um, this is an application for a two-parcel minor subdivision from the applicants Intercounter Properties LLC and Zeotis Realty LLC, located at 274 North Queens Avenue in Massapequa. Uh, the 12,000 square foot area subject property is situated on the south side of North Queens Avenue in the hamlet of North Massapequa, town of Oyster Bay. The application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 120 feet of frontage on North Queens Avenue into two equal parcels. Uh, proposed lot one will have 60 feet of frontage by 100 feet. Uh, proposed lot one and two will have 60 feet of frontage by 100 feet for a total of 6,000 square foot area parcel. The Town of Oyster Bay Zoning Board of Appeals has approved the request for variances for the proposed subdivision. Variance to construct a new dwelling on subdivided lot having less lot area and width of lot than permitted by the ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, the proposed property would remain in character and representative of similar surrounding properties located within a 200 foot radius. There are seven parcels in close proximity to the subject property that also have a land area of 6,000 square feet and five neighboring parcels with a land area of 5,000 square feet or less. Uh, here to speak on the application is Kevin Walsh. The other Kevin Walsh. The other Kevin Walsh. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin, Walsh Walsh is, Kevin Walsh be on this. <laughs> Kevin Walsh is not here. We did not receive any comments for this application. Uh, so there's no additional information from last meeting. Okay, so I'll, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move approval of NCPC 23-2020 with a neg deck. Second. Motion made, second, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner L.B., not there. Commissioner Blue? Yes. Commissioner, uh, third Vice Chair Lewis? Yes. Second Vice Chair Shapiro? Yes. First Vice Chair Greenfield? Yes. Chairman Glennon, yes. Okay. Last agenda item. Uh, this is NCPC file 24-2020, an application for a two-parcel minor subdivision at 3314 Woodward Avenue in Wontaw, New York. Uh, the 18,750 square foot area subject property is situated on the south side of Woodward Avenue in the hamlet of Wontaw, town of Hempstead. 
application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 120 feet of frontage on Woodward Avenue into two separate parcels. Proposed lot A will have 60 feet of frontage by 150 feet, a total of 9,000 square feet. Proposed lot B will have 60 feet of frontage by 150 with an attached 10 foot by 75 foot parcel adjoining the Southeast Quadrant for a total of 9,750 square feet. Uh, the Town of Hempstead Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed subdivision and the application is considered as of right. Um, we did receive two public comments on this application. Um, I'll read the first comment. This comes from Paul Canellis, a neighbor to the West. Um, <clears throat> to whom it may concern. Uh, my name is Paul Canellis and I reside at 3302 Woodward Avenue, the adjoining property to the west side of the above mentioned and proposed minor subdivision with my wife Vicki and my two boys Billy and Peter. We moved here in 2008 from Valley Stream with two distinct goals in mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. First, to find a community with an excellent school district for our children, and second, to find a home in that very same community that offered ample space and privacy to raise my family in. Our block consists of the type of community we have worked so hard to find, one with large lots with homes offering both enough space between them, as well as beautiful views of trees and clear skies. Based on the little that we have been shown, the proposed development is detrimentally dissimilar to the homes in our neighborhood, which will negatively affect our happiness in this neighborhood, together with our home's property value. These homes represent exactly the opposite of what we expected to be considered, let alone approved by your board. How can you let my family and I down like this, especially in the midst of a pandemic? You should only be representing the best interests of the residents of this town. I had the opportunity to attend the Zoom meeting on July 16th at 10 a.m. with an expectation to find out more about what the developer was planning for the plot next to my home. I was surprised when I did not see one blueprint or schematic or set of building plans of the proposed homes that are now planned to be built. I even went so far as to ask for this information to be presented prior to the meeting and was told by Mr. Hessel that this information is not a requirement and will not be provided by the builder. Hence, all we had to review was a survey, which is simply a bird's eye view of the building envelope. No details of the actual homes were provided at the Zoom meeting, not the positioning of or amount of windows, the floor plans with types of rooms, the location and number of the air conditioning units, and the location and number of garages, if there will be any. How can the board arrive at an informed and just decision on the application without even the most elemental of plans and construction details, and despite being requested by me, one of your residents? On the matter of the air conditioning units, when Mr. Greenfield questioned counsel for the developer, Howard Abertine, whether we objected to having the units placed on the side facing our property, Mr. Abertine responded that we were aware and did not object. Mr. Abertine's response is belied by the fact that we never <coughs> the placement of the air conditioning on the side facing our property. We're never advised that these were the plans of the developer and were never provided with the blueprints. How could we therefore have been aware and objected when this fact was never disclosed? The only thing discussed was extending the structure to nine feet from the property line instead of the proposed five feet as shown in the survey. That being said, we do not agree to have the units on the side facing our property due to the noise they would create. My children's bedrooms are on that side as well as our backyard and outdoor living space. On the matter of the blueprints, we had so many questions and no answers. Our property is 90 by 100, while the proposed lot is 60 by 150. How far back will the home be and will it completely close us in? This is not the case right now. Uh, we have another house to the south as seen in the, in the photo. Uh, furthermore, are any trees being taken down? What about screening, planting, plan? What is being proposed by the developer? We have further been advised that homes being built in close proximity can present destabilization of land, which may result in foundational and structural damage to our home and even the potential for cave-ins. We'd like to review the engineer's study to ensure that all safety-related issues are addressed, including shoring, underpinning, and destabilization. The application as it stands will negatively and substantially affect our right to privacy and interfere with our right to enjoy our home. Uh, Note the existing home on the said property in question has a low level garage facing toward our property while the actual home begins further away. This offers ample space and privacy for both parties. Additionally, the photo shows the end of our backyard. How far will the new construction come out and how high will it be? 
Where will windows be positioned and will they have a direct sight to our backyard living space and children's bedrooms? Will we have any privacy at all and will, or, and will our backyard be completely obstructed? Please note the current open space from our backyard. Um, from another vantage point, please note our glass atrium, which extends the length of our home. Any structure near a property line will have a direct line of sight well into our living space. Once again, this is not an issue right now as the existing structure is a low level garage. Our children's bedrooms are situated directly above the atrium. Uh, in conclusion, we respectfully request an adjournment of this decision on the matter until we have some transparency as to what exactly is being proposed for the said property. Without such transparency, we are unable to assess how these structures will affect our lives, privacy, our home's structural integrity and property value. We have noted the developer's agreement to move the proposed structure to no less than nine feet from the property line instead of five feet as shown in the survey. Sincerely, the Canellis family. Um, I also have one more quick comment from Maria Panikos at 2031 Beach Street. Uh, to whom it may concern, I live at 2031 Beach Street in Wontaw. My home is directly behind the property that is requesting an application for subdivision. I would like to request an adjournment until the builder can provide and show us an approved plan on what he's going to do regarding this property. Uh, because this property is going to affect my life, my family's life, and our entire lifestyle in general. We do not agree on two homes to be put on this property because we're not going to be a suburb anymore. We're going to turn into like an urban city. And that is, those are the two comments. And uh, I believe we have Howard Averteen here to speak. Uh, yeah, Morning, I Howard. A, uh, I have a question, uh, a general question about site plan review in the town of Oyster Bay. Do they have a site plan uh, ordinance and uh, hearing process because most of these questions really affect the site plan and not the subdivision application. Does anybody know the answer to that? Oh, I, I can answer. Oh, I can answer that if you wish. Thank you. Surely. Uh, th just just uh, to clarify, this property. How Howard Howard, name and address for the. Record. I'm sorry, Howard Averteen, five seven five Underhill Boulevard, Syosset, representing the applicants. Uh, just to clarify for the record, the property is, uh, is in Wanton, the town of Hempstead. Thank you. Uh, and Hempstead does not have a site plan review process. Uh, the uh, developer uh, of the property um, uh, intends fully to uh, build zoning compliant homes on the parcels. As the commission is aware, these the proposed subdivision creates two uh, fully zoning compliant parcels as far as uh, lot width, lot area, and um, it, as I indicated, it is the intention uh, to construct fully compliant um, uh, zoning compliant dwellings. Okay, well, but my I, point, Mr. Abbekin, I'll just, uh, uh, you, I, I appreciate what you're presenting, um, but my point is the problem really lies with the um, with the town that does not have site plan review to address the concerns of this neighbor. Now, whether they are, um, uh, some of the concerns sound reasonable, some of them um, uh, maybe are just a fact of the zoning, but that is the problem. We are not doing a site plan review, uh, it, unless I'm misunderstanding this, but we don't, we don't do that with a subdivision. And, uh, it's it's a it's a deficiency in the in the town is what I'm trying to say why this uh, this these questions are coming up and 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 uh, in 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 an area where they should be addressed at a site plan hearing which unfortunately does not exist for the town. All right. So point uh, point taken. Could I ask that we back up the slides a little bit since the point is being made by council about the. Um, the basic uh, question of the size of the property and, and its compliance with zoning. Maybe we can see that aerial. Yeah, there it is. So could you just explain again, what is really the action here? What is, what is currently there? It looks like there's quite a bit already here. So yes, why? there, there, there is a, um, a one and two story existing dwelling. You can see this, um, in looking at the, I don't know if that can be zoomed in at all, but, um, uh, the photo that you see there uh, 
you can see where the out the, the home is and in sort of in the center there there's a two story dormer the remainder of the structure is one story the existing uh portion of the structure on its westerly side is 5 feet 6 inches from uh the property line of the uh, uh of the property owner directly to the west and you can see there is a um uh, an in-ground swimming pool with a patio surrounding it, uh, a raised patio directly to the west of the swimming pool. There is a, uh, a cabana or pool house, if you will, in the uh, southeast corner of the property. Uh, all of those structures um, upon subdivision and redevelopment will be removed and there will be two new single family dwellings uh, constructed, as I indicated, in full compliance with zoning. So right uh, now I'm not seeing two single-family detached homes already, one on each of the properties that you have a line around? That's not already the case? I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay, so... It's the red line. Wood Avenue... It's the red box. Oh, okay, it's the red box. Yeah, the red box is the, is the subject. So that's coming, that's all coming out. They're going to put two homes. Essentially what we're looking to do is, 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 is bisect the, right. the, the, that property. It's, it's 120 feet in width. We're going to make two 60 foot wide parcels. So there's going to be a line right down the middle. That's, that's the plan. And uh, I, what I would like no, to say. No, when we're looking at the sheet, we see the line down the middle. Okay. But this oh, okay. is. The, yeah, the, in doc. the file, there should be, I don't know whether you, you have them available to you, but there is a, a, a drawing that's part of the application that depicts. Yeah, this, um, this, is, in, this is in our drawing, uh, Neil. This is I, I understand now, yeah. Okay, so, so listen, so this is zoning compliant, you know, unless anybody has any other issues, I think we, we should. Uh, I, this is one question. I have a question. Yeah. I do as well. Commissioner Blue, you could go first. Thank you. I just wanted to know whether anyone responded to the residents. They sent in a couple of questions. Could we tell them or did we tell them that they can go to the building department or to the town? They're, they're the ones who issued the building per, uh, permits and they're the ones who will be looking at the plans. Uh, well, nothing is just to clarify. Nothing has been filed, obviously, because um, right. the builder is not yet in title and the uh, application before the commission has not yet been approved. So I understand nothing. that. That's but, not the question. The question was, could anyone just tell them that the place that they can go to get the information that they're seeking is actually the building department? We well, don't the, have it. No, the, ever I mean, the comments are to us, though. We can't sort of pass and say you have to call the. I mean, at well, some I, point, I think what Commissioner Blue is saying is if this was an in-person public hearing, we would have asked that of the, course. the owner go to the neighbors and talk to them and say what the plans are. So we don't have that. So staff... Uh -oh. So staff, have we responded to the, the neighbors here yet? Uh, no, I can do that though. Thank but you. Before you Thank respond, you. staff, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was the essence of my questions. If we were at the hearing and everybody was in the hearing room, we would probably send them outside in the ante room to meet and discuss and review it. So in the absence of that, Howard, I would like to ask you to reach out to the good neighbors. They have some valid questions and concerns uh, with respect to these homes. The, there was no zoning hearing, so they couldn't ask it there. Uh, a lot of their questions are not before us. Our job is just to subdivide the property, not to conduct a site plan review or a zoning hearing. And uh, the issue of the air conditioner, I think you guys could easily solve by just having a conversation with your client and the neighbor as well as the other concerns that uh, the neighbors uh, have rightfully so out of the uh, lack of information have asked. So I would uh, ask you, uh, Howard, to uh, arrange a meeting, especially as soon as you have building plans available to show them and share with them and, and uh, architectural design of the house so that uh, they can uh, feel better informed. Uh, Counselor, you, you received copies of their comments, I assume, correct? I received the, um, Mr. Canellis's. I did not receive the other, but just following up on Mr. Greenfield's comment, if I may, uh, in anticipation of that comment, uh, I spoke to my client upon receipt of um, the letter from the Canellis family and went over the items with him. 
uh, and um, the principal of um, Capland Homes, who is going to be the developer here, Frank Caponia, uh, they, he's been um, operating in Nassau County for many years. He's built dozens of homes. He is a builder of, of, of fine quality and integrity. And I, I uh, spoke with him about reaching out to the, to the neighbors and, and showing them uh, the plans. And he readily agreed to do that, said he'd be happy to do that and try to accommodate um, whatever he can in terms of satisfying their concerns. Okay, uh, and the, pan the Panicals are right behind the, uh, that property as well. So they were the other ones that wrote the letter. Yes, and, and okay. he'll take, he, he um, and I'm asserting on his behalf uh, as counsel that he will take those steps uh, and, and, and give them the information. Uh, clearly, you know, they, they I think they have concerns and have raised concerns which go far beyond uh, uh, what is what is typical in terms of the you know this, the the concept of two homes and and things of that nature, and in all uh, frankness, I don't think that's something that we're going to be able to address to their satisfaction. However, uh, the the issue of um, AC unit location, uh, screening, uh, things of that nature, uh, tweaking um, side yards, th that can all be uh, addressed and discussed. Uh, with the neighbors, so uh, it is. It is my request on behalf of the applicants that the board um, vote on the application, uh, and with the um, firm representation on on my part, on behalf of my client, that uh, that they will reach out to the um, uh, neighboring property owners and provide them with all the information uh, Thank you, that Council. is available. Thank you. And uh, Chairman Commissioner Warren, did you have something? Yeah. Yes. Um, I thought in the past when, when a subdivision has come before us that we did get a sense of what the house is, you know, like the size of the house, you know, whether it's two story, one story, a one garage. I mean, you know, I, I thought that that's what we had been asking for when there was a subdivision, just so. On, don't we have the building envelope here? Didn't I see something? Can you go, yep, yeah, yeah. We have the build the Commissioner out. Warren is asking for more, uh, which would be a kind of a concept of what the site plan would be. Because right. that's what the that's what the neighbors are asking about. You know, it's is it a one story? Is it a two story? It does it have one garage? Where are the where's the driveway? I mean, I I, th I think part of the problem that you have here is that you first got to get it approved for the subdivision before you know what you're going to develop there, and then once you go back to the building department, they may have changes to you as well. So it's hard, hard to put that together. So we have the building envelope with the setbacks and everything else that they can get a, a sense of what it is. Okay. And council has already agreed that he's going to speak to the, the good neighbors once they have an idea of what it's going to be and take into the consideration their concern. Is that correct, council? Uh, it's absolutely correct. And I can you know, also tell you that you're 100% you're right. Things change during the process uh, of, of the town approvals. But uh, I can tell you that uh, the the um, we have to comply with certain uh, front yard setbacks. We have to comply with rear yard requirements. Right. Uh, the, the building envelope is not going to be the size of the home. It's going to be considerably smaller. Uh, ultimately, that's just showing uh, where a home can be positioned. But you also have the challenge of complying with lot coverage requirements, which would preclude uh, uh, something as large as the rectangle you see on there. Uh, but uh, it can be a position as, as, as far uh, forward as that or as far to the rear and with the side yards. But um, as I indicated, we'll be happy to work with the neighbors to try to assuage their concerns. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Caponia, the principal of Capland, uh, is, a, is a, um, a, not someone uh, who, who uh, wants to cause dissatisfaction when he's doing a project. He wants to work well with uh, with the neighbors surrounding and ensure that they're um, that that first and foremost that uh, they are provided with the information they request, and also as far as the construction process and and things of that nature to ensure there's no intrusions, to ensure there's no undue disturbances. He's that type of builder uh, that that uh, takes those things uh, uh, very seriously. Very good. Thank you. Howard, based upon your representation, I'm fine with moving forward and uh, voting on this, Mr. Chair. So do you want to put that in the form of a motion? Let me get my papers here. Uh, I make a motion that we approve 
case number oh, NCPC minus subdivision file 24 2020, property of Wantor, Tana Hempstead, 3314 Woodward Avenue, Wantor, uh, for approval with a negative deck. I'll oh, second it, Mr. Okay, Chair. Is... Second it all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, quickly, roll call. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Shaper? Yes. Still no Commissioner Ellaby. Commissioner Blue? Yes. Third Vice Chair Lewis? Yes. Second Vice Chair Shapiro? Yes. First Vice Chair Greenfield? Yes. Chairman Glennon? Yes, so it is approved. Okay, I just read the final statement and we'll be adjourned until August 13th. Due to the coronavirus emergency at state and federal bans on large meetings or gatherings and pursuant to Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 220.1 issued March 12, 2020, suspending the open meetings law, the July 23rd uh, Planning Commission meeting will be held electronically via Zoom and may be viewed by the public via uh, live stream on Zoom. Uh, and it will be described as the July 23rd, 2020 NCPC meeting. Instead of a public meeting open to the public to attend in person, members of the public may listen to or log into the video conference. Access and, and instructions for Zoom is available on the Nassau County Planning Department webpage at www.nassaucountyny.gov forward slash 2856 forward slash planning hyphen department. The Planning Commission was accepting public comments for cases listed in sections B and D of the July 16th NCPC meeting by email at, that were to be delivered at ncpc at nassaucountyny.gov. Uh, the deadline to submit those comments was four o'clock this past Monday, July 20th. Late comments received after Monday, July 20th at 4 p.m. were not accepted nor considered. The Planning Commission has now made a final decision on these agenda items contained in sections B, C, and D after reviewing and considering the public comments. Uh, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn until August 13th. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, everyone. Enjoy I your time. Stay, well. stay, safe. stay safe. I just want to take care. Enjoy your vacation, safe. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Howard. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Howard, with your, uh, we're going to provide you the, uh, the neighboring contact information, um, and we will also be providing them your information as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.